colors I'm using today is hooker deep green, cobalt blue, yellow okra, sepia, azure yellow deep, lemon yellow, ultramarine, prussian blue, burnt sienna, permanent red, queen of crimson rose, vermilion, paint gray, and I'm using a white highlighter pen. Now I'm overlaying my pencil sketch with the ink, waterproof ink. And today I want to share with you some articles that inspired me so much and uh, I'm gonna start now. Nowadays we are surrounded by some powerful ideas about the sort of things that make, that will make us happy. The first of this is that we tend to think that re really to deliver satisfaction, the pleasures we should aim for need to be rare. We become suspicious of the ordinary which we assume is mediocre, dull and uninspiring. And likewise we assume that things that are unique, hard to find, exotic or unfamiliar are naturally going to give us more pleasure. Then we want things to be expensive. If something is expensive, we value it more, whereas if something is cheap or free, it's a little harder to appreciate. The pineapples, for instance, dropped off a lot of people's wish list of fruit when its price fell from exorbitant. They used to cost the equivalent of hundreds of pounds to unremarkable. Caviar continues to sound somehow more interesting than eggs. Then we want things to be famous. In a fascinating experiment, a well-known violinist once donned scruffy clothes and basket at a street corner and was largely ignored through people would flock to the world's greatest concert halls to hear just the same men play, play just the same pieces of music. Lastly, we want things to be a large scale. We are mostly focused on a big scheme that we hope will deliver a big kinds of enjoyment, marriage, career, travel, getting a new house. These approaches aren't entirely wrong, but they unintentionally create unhelpful bias against the cheap and easy available, the ordinary, the familiar and the small scale. As a result, if someone says they have been on a trip to a Caribbean island to buy a private jet, we automatically assume they had a better time than we imagine that visiting the Uffizi Gallery in Florence is always going to be a nicer than a reading a paperback novel in the back garden. A restaurant dinner at which lobster termidol is served sounds a good deal more impressive than a supper of a cheese sandwich at home. The highlight of the weekend seems more likely to be a hand-gliding lesson rather than a few minutes spent looking at the cloud sky. It feels odd to suggest that in modest ways of lily of the wally, the cheapest flower at many florists might give us more satisfaction than Van Gogh original. And yet, the paradoxical and cheering aspect of pleasure is how unpredictable it can prove to be. Fancy holidays are not always 100% pleasurable. Our enjoyment of them is remarkably vulnerable to emotional trouble and casual bad moods. A fight that began with a small disagreement can end in can end up can end up destroying every benefit of five star holiday resort. Real pleasures often seem insignificant. Eating a fig, having a bath, whispering in a bed in the dark, talking to a grandpa, talking to a grandparent, or scanning through old photos of when you were a child. And yet these small scale pleasures can be anything but small. If we actually take an opportunity to enjoy them fully, these sort of activities may be among the most moving and satisfying we can have. Fundamentally, this isn't really about how much small pleasures have to offer us. It's about how many things, how many good things there are in life that we unfairly neglect. We can't wait for everything that's lovely and charming to be approved by others before we allow ourselves to be delighted. We need to follow our own instincts about what is really important to us. 
And today we are drawing and painting this small old house which one of my small, small pleasures that I want to share with you. And maybe you can share your own in the comments or, and tell about what the most satisfying thing that you do in your ordinary life. I want to thank you all for comments that you left for the previous videos and uh, I want this one be nice and happy urban sketching for everyone who wants to start with the simple things and this one this urban tutorial is gonna be easy and next we're gonna move to the watercolor part when this drawing part will be finished Now, if you want to, you can pause the video and copy the sketch. From the next watercolor part, I'm gonna need a big mop brush for the sky, and I'm gonna need a round, smaller brush. It's number six, one good brush for the other parts for the, our house. And I'm using uh, watercolors from uh, Van Gogh Royal Talents. It's 18 watercolors pet in pens and two tubes with white and uh, paints gray and it's really nice for the sketching. Now I'm starting uh, with the sky part. I'm gonna use a little bit of Prussian blue for the sky and a little bit of cobalt blue. More of Prussian blue. A little bit more of water and as you can see here I'm using the paper tape to leave this part white after my wash um, after my watercolor wash so we start with the sky with this really light blue color a little bit more a little bit more here and a little bit more water And it's going to be a slightly darker on the left side. And here in the bottom. As well. Now I'm going to use a little bit of paper tissue to lift up some colors here and suggest a bit of clouds
and that's it. Now we are moving to our house and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use burnt sienna for this part. A little bit of cobalt blue, lemon yellow, and quinacridone rose to make some grayish color. And we're gonna suggest this part here. Just a little bit of grey colors and these darker parts here, here and we have this dark part here as well under the roof and here the same. And as you can see, if I'm using only the gray color, it might be looking a little bit boring. So I'm gonna add a little bit of ultramarine here. A little bit of sepia in some parts here. Russian blue here and there and more sepia. Okay. And this part I need them to be darker. And it's okay if it's bleeding one into each other. It will look nice. And we have this dark stripes here. So we can add them. We erase a little bit of color. And now we're gonna need some cold greens for the window and it's gonna be a bit of greenish blue. I'm using my <coughs> Viridian, Viridian and uh, Prussian blue. Oh, it's not a Viridian, it's, it's Hocken Deep Green. And I'm gonna use it here. And it's a little bit too, too much of blue. Add more green. Add more green here. Okay. And I'm gonna use it here as well. Some of sepia for these parts. Um, a little bit of. Burnt sienna for these parts here and here. A little bit of slightly blue in here, just just suggesting its greyish color. And we need.
need some darker colors so I'm gonna mix ultramarine with sepia and add some of these colors here And we're gonna add these blues with greens between this. I, I'm not so sure what, what is it is, paper sheets or maybe something else. And we just need more water here to just slightly suggest its texture. We're leaving a lot of white space, but in some parts we just Add a little bit of shadows with our blues here as well. Okay, I'm gonna need the water wash of burnt sienna, and maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre here. More water. It's still too bright. And I'm just suggesting just a little bit of colors here on the roof. And maybe I'm gonna use more of ultramarine with water on the other side. It looks a little bit slightly darker and it might be a shadow part, we just can suggest some shadows coming here. We're gonna need our sepia for this darker small part. And now we're gonna use all of these colors together to mix it to gray and to make this wash and of course we don't want them to be too boring um, so we are adding some of purples here some of yellows here and more of grays in some parts as we have our ink work done as we have our drawings done we we made the, most of the work suggesting structure now we just need to make it look a little bit better i'm using some of my paints gray here and just lead it into these tiles okay. okay we have a little bit of color here and we can just let it bleed to the upper parts and it, it will suggest some kind of rotting of, of the surface because it's it's an old house. And I'm gonna use a little bit more of yellows here. bit more of those in some other parts like here and there when because we can see there are some dots some parts are darker some parts are a little bit brighter and we need to let it appear in our drawing Just suggesting a 
I'm erasing a bit of color from the surface to create some uneven units here. I'm just mixing it all together until I feel it's gonna look a bit better. Just playing with the colors. Part and I'm gonna use golden yellow with some of vermilion and a bit of burnt sienna for this part. Leaving some white space. And now we're gonna use our red, our permanent red, a bit of crinacridone rose for the bright and maybe a little bit of vermilion for the bright red part here. Quite nice, and we're gonna add some darker colors here and there to make it look a bit more alive. And we have the same colors here. We're gonna make the bottom part a bit darker. We have this nice greenish blue, quite the same as the upper part, like here. I'm gonna use it to make these windows a bit too bright. A 
a bit more of this. More of Prussian blue. Okay. Nice. Now we have yellow okra for this part and for this part as well. Okay. Right. We need a little bit more of dark violets. And we have a bright dark color here as well. Top. I'm gonna suggest more shadows on the bottom part. It's ultramarine with paint green. Oh no, it's not paint with sepia. And I'm covering all the shadow part here. And I'm gonna use ultramarine and sepia one more time in this part too because it's really dark. Leaving this white spot. And on the other side too. Taking a little bit more of reds. Yeah, one more time. To make it look brighter. Here as well. Nice and bright colors. I'm gonna use more of sepia and ultramarine here on the roof. Some parts 
and mostly here where are the darkest shadows are located and one more time here Yellow okra. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellows here as well. With a bit of Burn sand splash. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit more of splashes here with the red colors. With some bright green colors. a little bit of blue now here I'm gonna suggest a little bit of structure adding some dark values Just suggesting shapes and a little bit more of ultramarine here. shadows here in the upper part one more time a little bit of shadows here and 
some bright and nice yellows. Just here. Now I'm waiting until it completely dries and then I'm going to use my white liner, highlighter. And now I'm going to add a little bit of highlight here in the part that looks too dark. Just suggesting a little bit some of shape here on the door. this part and small windows and we just can suggest a little bit of structure here Add something here and I'm gonna try it first with my ink pen.
just a little bit more details here. That is all for today. I'm happy to paint with you today and I'm happy to see you in the next episode.